So you will learn to improvise with the tools that you have at hand. Nailing hammers are light. It makes it easier to drive exact nails. This is a block for clinching a nail. With one hand you come underneath the protruding nail and you hit the nail to seat it into the shoe and it bends the ring off the end portion of the nail gets curved back towards the shoe. If you have a clinch block, it doesn't take much tap. But don't, if budget's tight, you have shoe pull-offs, put it here. And there's a shoe pull-off. If you don't have very good pull-offs, you have an old rasp, take your old rasp and use that. So learn to improvise with the tools at hand and have fun shoeing your horses. So we have secured that shoe with seven nails. The outer branch has a greater distance. So oftentimes we'll put four nails in the outer branch. The inner branch is a shorter distance to the center of the toe. So I would use three nails. It saves me a nickel. We have trimmed the foot, shaped the shoe, nailed the shoe. Now we'll clinch. And that foot will be complete. We have something. I use an old wore out pair of nippers to cut nails with. We have clinchers and we have one of our older wore out rasps. I bring it forward on the foot stand. If a horse's foot keeps sliding off the stand, I move it further forward. If he's trying to drag it back, maybe he's still sliding forward, so I'm going to stretch him a little bit. Now, we have nails that are driven properly. They're blocked with a clinch block, a rasp, some type of heavy weight. I'm gonna cut them so they're just a little over a sixteenth of an inch. You'll notice that when the nail came out of the hoof wall, it pooched out some hoof wall. In the industry, we call it a bug eye. If I take the smooth side of the rasp, <coughs> remove the bug eye, now when I clinch that nail, it's a pretty clinch because I have a place for it to lay. There's no sharp edges. Well, what if I don't have a clincher? I can remove the bug eye. And come over here with my hammer and clinch block. And I actually clinched that nail with a block and a hammer. Today, time is really important. I think we learned to use clinchers because it's easier to get a fast, professional, clean clinch if you have a good pair of clinchers. If you're trying to use trashy clinchers, throw them away and learn to use a block and a hammer. There I went through and I just removed these bug eyes. We take our finishing rasp, our dullest rasp in the box, we rasp beneath the nail to remove the bug eye. Be careful not to put a kink in the shank of the nail. You just simply remove excess hoof. Grab your clinchers. If I want to grab to a high jaw, sometimes my hands can't reach. So I adjust the handles of the clincher where they're comfortable, 
and squeeze. You get kind of a fast pop. That's a good sound. There's nothing wrong with coming back and clinching the same one twice just to make sure it's tight. Out here in ranch country, rocky ground here in central Texas, if I have a tight clinch, it's less apt that I would lose, that I would lose a shoe. Once the clinching is there, there's a little bit of sharp burr and stuff, so I want to go over it lightly with the smooth side of the dull rasp, and I don't want any sharp edges. You do have to be careful not to rasp them too much. So I will rasp over the new clinches to take any sharp edges, and then I'll back the toe up to my critical one-third because that's what I measured and that's where I set the break over on my shoe. The last point of contact with the ground will be at our one-third measurement. Remember, with horseshoeing, we want a clean looking job with not excess shoe that he can step on and tear off. We're shaping the shoes to the symmetry of the hoof. We're backing the toe up to the natural breakover. That's our one third, two thirds. We will show you on another foot how we're moving these feet through a range of motion in order to establish a natural medial lateral balance, which is the hoof talk low tech. The hoof talk locomotion oriented technique will display on the other feet. Keep in mind how we started the day. We said it's easy to shoe a horse. Have some parameters, have some guidelines, have a plan, work the plan. It's really easy to shoe a horse. There's a foot shod with the hoof talk method. <laughs>